The Scottish referendum was one of the biggest political events of the last decade. Whichever way the result went, one thing was certain, the UK would never be the same again. When the No campaign won, there were calls for more devolved powers to Scotland. Now there are for the North East too. In 2004, a local referendum took place to build a unified assembly in Newcastle. The plans were rejected with a large majority because of concerns about a greater number of officials. But that was 10 years ago. The BBC in Newcastle has been hard at work debating this issue, with a special programme dedicated to the various bodies involved in the argument. Already there are plans for lots more powers to go to Scotland, and straight after the referendum the Prime Minister began talking about English votes, English MPs for English votes for English laws, basically. Uh, but he also talked about casting more powers to cities, more powers out there. And the discussion really has started, certainly amongst the politicians, about you know, how to devolve power in England. In what form? What should be devolved? Etc. Should there be an English Parliament? Um, so that kind of stimulates the debate. But we also want to know what the public think about this. What the problem is? You know, why they feel perhaps that uh, Westminster doesn't understand this region, and you know what the um, the powers are they might want, what and what form they might want them whether they want them at all. These questions are arising again because can you have a United Kingdom when Scotland is going to get so much more power, particularly in this part of the world when we're so close to the border? Is it right? Is it fair? Can it be justified for Scotland to have so much freedom over its own affairs, but those that not to be extended to the north of England, other parts of, of England as well? So I think those things have changed. Members of all parties attended the event, some with more to say than others. Hilton Dawson, founder of the North East Party, believes the area need community voices to be heard and the Parliament's MPs don't know enough about the area. I think people see that there is a, is a need to get major decisions taken here in the North East, those big decisions about people's lives, about jobs, about transport, about health, about housing, about education, all of the rest. We, we think that there are successful models already in the UK, in Scotland and Wales, that we simply need to, uh, to, to learn from and not to ignore and try and impose undemocratic structures and uh, unworkable ways of doing things on the, uh, on, on the English regions. We know from the example of Plaid Cymru and the Scottish National Party that, uh, that, that, that parties can be built, challenges can be made and we will hit the Westminster parties where it hurts, at the ballot box. Other attendants were concerned about coverage of the northern cities. The North East has the ability to stand on its own two feet, but to, for that to happen, we need Westminster to, to let go and enable us to take much more of the decisions that affect us locally. And that's about um, powers and responsibilities, but in particular, much greater determination locally of how public spending is made. And by doing that, we can get greater efficiencies, more people into jobs, more prosperous economy, and I think better overall for the region. What we urgently need now is a people's debate, a people's constitutional convention. That's what changed things in Scotland in the 90s. There was a convention that came up with the blueprint for a Scottish Parliament and when it was then voted on after the debate, people voted for it and now they want more powers. So that's what has to happen in the North East and, and across England and all the regions that people need a say, not just the currently elected politicians, representatives of big organisations. The North East is at the heartland of British industry and in the past five years Millsborough Council have been investing millions of pounds to try and give it a sense of independence with projects such as the Transporter Bridge and Terminus. But it's not just the politicians that care and there are now hundreds of people out there in the time and the tees that are starting their own personal protests against the Parliament and central, and central government. Les Hodge, the former Labour chairman of Thornaby Council, is next year standing as an independent, as a stand against mainstream politics. My priority is the, the residents of where I live, where, where I am. Um, you know, Thornaby is a nice place. It's got some real old fashioned uh, values. The, the fact that, you know, it was an airfield, it, Thornaby was extended and and all the rest of it, you know, see, so it has got some good history. And, but the thing is, though, there's a lot of Thornaby people, people like myself, moved into Thornaby. I've been here now for about 20 years, and I've got no intentions of moving. This is home. 
Um, and I do find that a lot of people feel like that. You know, they've moved in and we like it here. And yeah, I mean, if I could actually get in as a local councillor, then I would be happy with that. Um, but obviously, if the um, opportunity came to go higher, then obviously I would. What happens next is still to be decided. But with links between the North East and business in Scotland, it seems there may be opportunity long term for the region to take an independent direction.